Some of us try escapism when we're in the pit. All of you are very familiar, I'm sure, at least the men (laughs) and some baseball fan women (laughs) are familiar with what happened this past week. There was going to be a a third perfect game pitched, right? What was his name? His name was uh, Armando. I had to write this one down. I'll probably get it wrong. Armando. Somebody say it. Everybody said it differently. (laughs) Ha ha, see? (laughs) He's pitching a perfect game. That's, That's an incredible feat. It's barely been done in the history of Major League Baseball for its thousands and thousands of years of history in America's pastime. He's getting ready to pitch a perfect game. It is a feat. Young guy, he's got a one and one. It's a, it's a ball and a strike. He throws the pitch. All right, it's the last out. It's the, it's the ninth inning. He throws the pitch. The pitch is a routine play. It goes to the first baseman. The pitcher runs the first base, which I think is really cool as well because he could, he could secure his own perfect game. He gets there. He beats the runner. The first baseman throws the pitch, throws, or throws the hit, the ball to the pitcher. The crowd starts to go crazy because this guy's pitched a perfect game, and the umpire... Jim Joyce, right, is that his name, blows the call, calls the guy safe, blows the perfect game. Afterwards, the umpire takes a look, sees that he blew the call, he's crying. I mean, you'll barely ever see men cry. Men will go to funerals and not cry. But over baseball, they will cry like a baby. This guy, he's crying. I blew the call, I blew the call. Insert a couple sailor words in there as well. I blew the call, this kid, you know, I blew it for him. And Major League Baseball won't turn it over, so the guy does not have his perfect game. Although everybody knows he has his perfect game. I was watching a highlight, I think it was the game afterwards. Chevy decided to give him a Corvette. I don't know how much this guy gets paid, but I'm pretty sure he can afford a Corvette. They bring out this Corvette, and now think about it. Every time he's driving that Corvette, what's he going to be thinking about? His perfect, non-perfect game. (laughs) All right, Chevy's like, we'll put a Band-Aid on this. We'll give you a Corvette. And now all he's ever going to think about is that horrible situation when he's driving that car. Escapism. We do the same thing when we find ourselves in in the sinful despair. We try to buy things. We try to feed ourselves. We try to take vacations away from it. We try to, to feed that, and it's just escapism. When all God wants us to do is to put it all aside, and come to him freely and see that he has finished it for us. 